نحمده وصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كانه ولي حميم وقال عز وجل وقاتلوا في سبيل الله وقال عز وجل هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأوقع ذفم اللسان يفكر قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وزغنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا وزغنا اجتناب أمين يا رب I want to <coughs> explain something very important within the Sharia today and that is how do we resolve the conflict you know of on the one hand the Quran is saying وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ who can be better in speech than the one who calls towards Allah وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا and he does good deeds وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ and he says I am amongst those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ and the evil and the good they're not equal إِذْفَعَ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ call to the path of Allah in the most beautiful way فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌ حَمِيمٌ it may be that your worst enemy may become your best friend just recall the conversion of Umar bin Khattab رضي الله عنه so on the one hand the Quran is saying call them in the best way do, do dua for them if they're throwing stones at you on the other hand the same Quran is saying وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَ fight those people who fight you so in da'wah they're hurting you but you're doing du'as for them and then another ayah is saying fight them if they fight you and when they fight you defend yourselves and how do we resolve this conflict the way we resolve this conflict is by understanding a very important rule within the Quran and this is a very important rule for understanding the issue of da'wah and that is generally what happens if a hukum comes in the Quran let's say alcohol Allah says وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الصَّلَاةُ وَأَنْتُمْ سُكَارَ do not go near prayers while you're intoxicated then a few other ayat come finally saying this is uh, uh, this is not just do not, uh, do not uh, it makes it haram to drink alcohol the first ayah that said do not go near salah while intoxicated even though the hukum is essentially there but this ayah in terms of fiqhi hukum in terms of the fiqhi command of it has been released and the new command of the new ayah that is in regards to alcohol is now the one that is the uh, effective clause of the Quran regarding alcohol so now, so one hukum comes, one issue comes, and then it come, another comes. This one replaces this one in terms of uh, the basic message is the same, but the second one comes to uh, as the executive clause, okay, which we call nasikh and mansur. But this issue itself needs to be understood. What I'm trying to say here is that when the issue of da'wah was there, and Allah was saying do du'as for them, and then the issue of of, of fighting in the path of Allah came and Allah said fight them how do we reconcile this did it happen that the latter ayah the ayah to fight them cancelled the ayah of da'wah to be nice with them and to pray for them and be did that ayah cancel that ayah the answer is by ijma' of the ulama the ijma' of the ummah the ijma' is no these both ayahs don't cancel each other 
even though this hukam may seem to contradict this other hukam. Why? Why was it that they don't contradict each other? It was because it was for the Muslims to decide that which phase of da'wah they are in. Because even fighting for Muslims is a process of da'wah. So, you know, the foreign policy of Islam will be da'wah. And so, here I want to make clear a, from a hadith, if you all know the very famous book that's been translated in many, many languages called Hayat al-Sahaba. I'm going to read the English version. It's an authoritative book. And I have the book that has the tahqiq, meaning has the research upon the writings of the hadith in that book. So, <coughs> the heading says Rasulullah sallallahu never fought anyone until he had invited them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Abdullah bin Abbas narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu would never fight on any nation until he had already conveyed the da'wah of Islam to them Rasulullah sallallahu instructs the Muslim battalions to first gain people's confidence and then invite them to Islam Abdurrahman bin Aida narrates that whenever Rasulullah dispatched a battalion he would brief them thus gain the confidence of the people and do not attack them until you call them to Islam if you bring to me the residents of every baked and unbaked home on earth as Muslims it is more it would please me more than you killing their men and bringing their women and children to me as captives Rasulullah instructed the commanders of the Muslim troops to convey the message of Islam. I just want to continue. Uh, uh, there's many ahadiths in this book. So, meaning this is mutawatir. It is, there's many ahadiths and they have tahqiq upon them, they have research upon them. Their asnad is good. Okay? So, the point I'm trying to make is that the now Muslims are in different parts. Some of us are in peaceful lands, some of us are in lands of conflict, some of us are in different lands. And when we're reading the Qur'an, when we are reading the Qur'an and we're looking at our environment, we're reading the environment into the Qur'an, rather the Qur'an into the environment. Meaning, let's say if I live in a place of conflict and I read the ayat of jihad, and this happened in the Muslim world when, when, it was the, when the issue of nationalism, and so we did jihad in the, in the name of nationalism, jihad in the name of ashabiyah during the 30s and 40s and 60s to gain nationhood like you know Egypt and Libya and Algeria and uh, so, and so you are you you are reading the situation into the Quran rather reading the Quran into the situation that Muslims are not even allowed to fight for the issue of nationhood for asabiyah the same thing uh, could be said that what we call the jihad in Afghanistan or the jihad in Kashmir is actually a nationalistic jihad for Afghanistan and for Kashmir because the Prophet made it clear that real jihad is so that the name of Allah is most supreme I agree that there were many Muslims and many of the fighters who were fighting to make Allah supreme fighting so that the Islamic State would be established but we have to realize that once the, mujahid, the fighters fight then the politicians come in and the politicians they're all secular so we have to be smart about what we are doing as Muslims what I want to emphasize here is that there is no con- the, the, the idea is tawasal bil haq tawasal bil sabr. You enjoin the truth, and then when you enjoin people to the truth, there is a reaction from them for which you have to have sabr. And if you don't have strength, when the Prophet was in Mecca, what happened? Why was there no fighting when Bilal was being tortured? Why was there no fighting when Yasir and Sumayya were being tortured? Why did the Prophet tell the Sahaba, Kufu aidiyakum, keep your hands tight, don't fight? Because when you enjoin the truth, you have to have sabr. And that sabr can take two forms. Either that sabr is in the form of passive resistance, and the for- form of civil disobedience, in the form of don't raise your hands because you don't have the strength to do anything. You don't have the strength to stop this tyranny, so you have to have patience. And number two, when you see that now your people that are around you strong enough internally as well as physically, emotionally, 
and uh, externally that they're strong enough to defend themselves then you defend yourselves but you defend yourselves as and you become strong as a result of the fact that you did tawasul bil you enjoined the people to tr- the truth and as a reaction you had to go through the two phases of sabr in the beginning you can't do anything you just do dua for them and then, and, and then later on when Allah gives you strength then you can defend yourself fight for yourself fight for your rights man qatala duna man man qutila duna malihi fa huwa shahid whoever uh, dies trying to fight for his rights that somebody is taking away his property the prophet is a martyr you have the right to do that but you have the issue to see that are you reading the conflict of your situations into the quran or are you reading the quran into the situation having said that i wanted that to be clear that when we're reading these ayat that talk about doing da'wah the sequence of the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to do da'wah first and da'wah is primary and like the prophet said he would rather the whole world become muslim and accept islam rather than using uh, uh, other methods this is the preferred method according to the sunnah of the prophet and the prophet said never wish to meet your enemies so muslims we don't necessarily like conflict we understand the reality is that there will always be conflict there will be tawassul bil haqq tawassul bis sabr this is the sunnah allah has placed but rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqat lana bi allah do not put a burden upon us that we can't bear this is the attitude in terms of dua that we should have that we want you know the for us to have the right to live islam to practice islam to to teach islam to instruct people about islam to call people to islam to have the freedom of speech but if we don't have the strength to do anything about the tyranny upon us we should be we should be wise and we should be wise to fix our own ranks before we ga- engage anything else before we engage in anything else the prophet purified the sahaba organized the sahaba disciplined the sahaba before any anything else was done because you don't want to fight like a mob you don't want to create another chaos out of chaos if your own people are not disciplined and behaved and well mannered then the result of any conflict and conflict within the conflict will be more conflict and chaos so it's very important we understand the issue of da'wah that today by and large we muslims we have a lot of internal work to do we have to do da'wah to ourselves and we have to do da'wah to the general public aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimina wal-muslimat